guys, it's Teresa here of Larkin Design, and welcome to week 13 in my 2017 Project Life album. I am currently working on the digital portion of creating my layout here in, in Photoshop in the CC version, and I'm just going to open up all my photos. I have decided today that I wanted to work with the Paisley Press. Um, pocket guides. This is number six. It's available at the lily pad. I'll link down below. And so I have copied the template into a 12 by 24 inch wide canvas and then I copied it onto the right hand side of the layout as well. And I've deleted a couple of the or hidden a couple of the layers for some of the frames that I didn't want to repeats and have left those blank and so you'll see in a little while what I'm going to do with those blank spaces or blank clipping masks and um, right now I'm just bringing in the photos and adjusting here I'm adjusting some of the perspective using the lens correction tool that's um, that will let me make sure that the lines are straight and sometimes if your if your angle is a little bit off or whatever I also do a little bit of brightening and I always resize my photos so that they're a little bit easier to bring into the layout now when I brought this photo in here I have this photo of Alan and me um, we were just taking a walk through the neighborhood it's one of our daily sort of traditions and I brought it into the layout and it's a little bit smaller than the clipping mask itself and so I'm gonna do that a couple of times across the layout I'm gonna leave the photo smaller than the clipping mask itself and leave it like a white border around the photo I'll come back to that photo in a little bit and adjust the size so it's a little bit more appropriate to scale and there's a couple of things that I'm doing different today with the um, the photos and some of the clipping masks. So I wanted to be sure and include this portion of my process today so that you would get a feel for how I'm using this template sort of in a different way today. Um, I've used these templates a lot. They are part of the Paisley Press product offering and I'm also really excited this month to be a guest designer for the Paisley Press design team. Um, I've used their products a lot over the last two or three years. Um, my December Daily albums are a lot of the Paisley Press um, physical products and I've used her digital products quite a bit off and on throughout the last two years as well and so it's really exciting to be asked to be a guest designer this month for the month of May and so you'll see some of my products on the Paisley Press blog as well this month I'll be sharing those on Instagram as well and two of the projects I plan to share here on my YouTube and on my blog the third project will be a part of the Pocket Pages class that I'm working on, so I'll save that layout for the class, and you'll get to see that then. Um, so be sure to to uh, follow the Paisley Press blog, and I hope that you will be inspired to use some of her products as well. So continuing in with placing my photos here, you can see that I brought in one of the elements that's actually a frame um, from the hell the I'm sorry it's from the like forever kit and that will be the digital kit that I'm using for journaling cards and so I'm just sizing that Polaroid it's like a Polaroid frame with a little bit of text across it and I'm just sizing that over top of the photo itself and um, I just wanted s some of the, I really liked the, the words on the sides. I thought that was kind of fun. And I wanted to use these elements here on my layout. 
Now you could also print them and layer them on top of your printed layout as well. Um, that's a fun way to use these these Polaroid frames. Um, and then I also had this this cute little guy. Natalie made him in school, and he did not actually come to our house. I think she took him home to her dad's. But we got the photo of him, and he's long and skinny. The photo of him is long and skinny, um, so he doesn't he doesn't fit real well across the canvas of a three by four clipping mask. So I left him long and skinny for the four inch width, and then he has a little bit of white space around him as well. Um, yeah, so that's a fun way, like sometimes just leave your frames white and size your photos smaller than the frame themselves, and then just leave that. Um, I think that's the first time I've done this, and I love that, the, that using Photoshop allows you that flexibility to do different size photos rather than being committed to or married to the 3x4 or the 4x6. Um, and of course there's templates that can help you to use different size photos as well if you feel more comfortable doing that way, doing it that way. Um, when I bring these photos in, I don't use them in the clipping mask format. I just leave them layered on top of the frame. Um, and that works out too, you know, it's another way to do it. Um, this is another one of the the sort of Polaroid frames that were in that was in the elements of the For Like Ever kit. Um, so, and it takes me a minute here to work out the layering because you're gonna have your your clipping mask, then your photo, and then your frame on top of that. Um, so it takes me a minute to get that in the right place. What I recommend doing, and for some reason I don't know why I wasn't doing this in this process, and so it's part of why it takes a while. Um, the, the video today is about 42 minutes long, which is longer than normal. But what I recommend doing is, before you bring your photo into the layout, click on the layer that is the clipping mask that you want to place it on top of and that way it will bring it into the layers box over that layer um, and I wasn't doing that and so it was just bringing the photos in wherever I happened to be whatever layer I happened to be on and that sort of made it more difficult I don't know if I'm, make, if I'm explaining that really well um, but basically, before you bring a layout into your template, click on the layer that you want to be on, that you want your photo to be on. And sometimes I'm not really sure. I'll be honest, sometimes I bring a photo in to the template and I'm not really sure where I want to put it just yet. Um, so in that case, you know, just bring it in wherever and then move the layer wherever you need it to be in relationship to the clipping mask. So here I'm starting to work with the products from the For Like Ever kit. And so as my as part of my commitment for the Paisley Press design team this month, I got to pick any collection that I wanted to work with. And so I, I chose this one. Uh, one, it's a classic Paisley Press right? Um, it's just classic Paisley Press colors and Paisley Press style. And um, I really like the, the colors in this collection are lighter colors. That mint green is just one of my favorites right now that I love working with. And I'm loving having that mint color in my springtime layouts. Um, you know, you guys heard me ramble on and on through the winter months about the darker photos and the darker layouts. 
and now it's the flowers are popping and it's starting to get brighter during the day and longer days and so it's time for happier um, happier brighter colors and so Paisley Press does that really well um, I'm also going to use some of the full pattern papers right one of the reasons I wanted to use Photoshop this year was to be able to use some of these larger pattern papers in my layouts, um, both for the background and then I also use a couple of them for the journaling cards. Um, these are very, very simple, basic kind of patterns. They aren't very complicated, but they are just a lot of fun to use. And I always do like to use contrasting patterns for the backgrounds of these layouts. Um, I will say that one thing I did at the end of this process, before I printed it out, I did add a white border around each side of the layout just to help those photos pop a little bit more so they don't get lost against the pattern. Um, now this is one of the patterns that I used for a smaller journaling card. There's two ways to do this. You can crop the card down and then bring it into your layout. And I did that this way because I thought I was going to put this on a frame that doesn't have a clipping mask. Um, I ended up moving it over. But if, you're, if you don't particularly have a, a clipping mask, or if you want to just make it easier to bring in, you can crop it down before you bring it in. Um, just a word of caution then when you go back to your patterned paper and you exit out, click no to save so that you don't actually save the cropped version. Um, you can always re-download your files if something happens. You have a, a certain amount, of, with the lily pad files, you have a certain amount of time to do that but if if it's past the time I'm sure that they'll allow you if you contact customer service they'll allow you to restore that if something happens and you end up saving your changes or something um, this one you'll notice that I brought it in as a full-size pattern paper and then I scaled it down a little bit Remember that scale is the relationship of one item or one pattern or one object in relationship to what's around it. And um, so I sized that stripe down a little bit just so you could see more of the pattern in that frame or in that clipping mask. Now with the currently text with that paper, I didn't size it down. It looked pretty good to me on that canvas or on that frame. And so here you can see that I'm adjusting that smaller photo a little bit. The photo next to it of the wine bottle is also scaled down a little bit just to allow more of the frame to show. And then that allows, I'll tell you what I like about doing that is that then you have space for a little bit of embellishing that's sort of off the photo and you have space for a little bit of handwritten journaling as well. You could always add typed journaling here at this phase in your process. And then here's where I moved that that floral pattern. I moved it over to the date card and um, and then again sized down this photo of the waffles. So we've been in our house we've been making a lot of chocolate chip waffles here. We've been sort of experimenting with waffle recipes lately and um, we found a trick for using malted milk powder in your waffles so that they're just a little bit sweeter and then we always add chocolate chips to them as well we also got a new um, waffle maker that week I had had an old one for many many years and it finally gave out it stopped cooking on one side and so we bought a bigger one because, you know, when you have to make waffles for four kids, like that can take forever with a small waffle iron. So we got a bigger one and um, hence the waffle theme in this layout. 
It's a photo of the waffles. It's a photo of the waffle iron. And so we're kind of on a, a kick here lately. And that's fun, right? So I am just about finished here. I'm just going to make sure that these two photos are cropped and clipped properly here in their frames. Um, and then I'll save the layout. I did add a white border. Um, I didn't capture that on film. So I'm going to print that out then and I'll see you over at my desk and we'll start the embellishing portion here in just a second. Okay, so I've moved over to my worktop now and this is the printed layout. I've used my Canon Pix, my iX6820 wide format to print on 13 by 19. I just use Staples brand matte photo paper and then cut it down to 12 by 12. And so now I'm working with physical embellishments here. I have some products from Studio Calico from LA Studio. These are epoxy stickers from the Live Laugh Love collection and then Puffy Hearts. Yay! And I'm also going to use the Maggie Holmes <coughs> glitter alphabet from the Bloom collection. And I'm going to start with those here. I'm going to start with my date card. It currently says the month of March. Um, this is sort of a summary kind of card. Um, but I'm also going to add my week number and the actual week date. It's um, week 13 and it's March 26 through April 1. Um, so I'm just going to lay out my, my alphabets here um, <clears throat> and spell out week 13. Now I have a tendency, I have a tendency with these week numbers. I sometimes put them on a little bit not straight um so but it's okay right don't don't obsess over these things i think that's part of the handmade look i also have this little this little flamingo um i printed out some elements from the for like ever kit i printed them out and i've just laid them out on the layout already and you you'll be able to see those as i work across the layout how i've used some of those printable elements and i've also used some of the amy tangerine rubber pieces that were from some of her previous collections i just had them on my desk and i brought them in for color now when i'm preparing the physical embellishments for my layouts. Um, usually I'm going by color and so I'm, I wanted to bring out the pink and the mint color in this layout. Um, and there's also a little tiny bit of mustard yellow and of course I brought in the gold glitter alphabets just to have a little bit of sparkle here. Um, a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of dimension, a little bit of fun here. Um, for me, that's what the embellishing portion does, is it brings in the dimension and the tactile experience of the printed out layouts. Um, that's something that I'm still deeply committed to, even as a hybrid scrapbooker. And I hear this all the time. I hear this all the time that people are afraid if they use digital products that they're not going to get the tactile or the dimensional experience and hopefully these layouts are helping you to see that you can still use your digital elements to print them out, to print out your layouts and then still have that experience of using physical products. Um, just in different ways and actually it broadens the experience a little bit because it opens up the world of digital products to you in ways that that you might not have expected or that you might not have thought so if you find yourself thinking I'm a traditional scrapbooker I prefer physical products I don't want to get rid of my physical products trust me when I tell you that using digital products doesn't mean that 
you have to get rid of anything. You just bring it in and use it like your other traditional products and you still use those traditional products and those physical products as well. I still love my, my subscription kits and still use them all the time. So hopefully that, that helps you. One thing I also wanted to talk about in my video today is how I've used different shades of pink and red even though only pink is in the printed layout itself and in the collection itself. And this is, you know, sort of a practice of using different shades. I know sometimes purists think that um, you should only use one shade of a color, and so if it's not the exact shade of pink, then out goes that embellishment. Let me encourage you to, to think beyond that and bring in different shades of different colors. Um, it makes for a more visually interesting layout to use different shades and different tones and different, um, different uh, when you print on different textures, the same shade is going to look slightly different as well. And so think outside of a typical one-dimensional color scheme um, and encourage yourself and I encourage you to use different shades like that so you'll find some different you'll find some more reds in here you'll find there's a flare on the right hand side of the layout that is a slightly coral color and that's okay too um, you also notice how I just masked that photo and I added some lines here and so my journaling I had mentioned in the digital portion that I wanted to use some of these frames for journaling and I let the journaling overlap the photo a little bit here as well um, just for fun and then something I did here on this card next to that photo as I just added a little bit of glitter tape to the top and bottom. One thing that happens when your background is white, when your mat is white, and your cards are white, and your frames are white, then you sort of lose that boundary. Um, and so it looks like that for like ever card is floating. It actually has a, a frame. I used a little tiny bit of a shadow in Photoshop around that card just to give it a little bit of boundary and then I'm also using the glitter tape just so that that card stands on its own a little bit. I don't know if it works or not but it is cute and it is a cute way to use your glitter tapes and use your washi tapes here just to add a little bit at the top and the bottom. I did the same thing here. I added some lines using the that is the Becky Higgins roller date stamp from, it's not a date stamp, it's a roller stamp from the Project Life offering. Um, I'm getting the feeling that they're discontinuing that or not making it anymore. So if you want to get one, um, scrapbook.com, last time I checked, had about seven, six or seven left. Um, sometimes you can find them at, at a Michaels or at Hobby Lobby still. Um, so those are limited available, <laughs> but it is a staple that I use all the time. I use those lines on that roller stamp all the time. So these epoxy stickers I hadn't used yet. They're from LA Studio from last month, and I wanted to use some of the greens here and some of the reds. I'm going to use on this card, um, now I did my journaling in the Photoshop. I used the template, the Paisley Press template, to add my journaling. Um, these are my, the photo is from my lilies. They're just starting to pop. I have this little grouping of them out by my mailbox. And every year they come back a little bit fuller and a little bit taller and a little bit more lush. And so I was just excited to see them 
pop out of the ground this year. So I added my journaling in Photoshop and then I layered just a couple of banners on top. There's a um, printed, printed banner from the For Like Ever kit and then a dimensional banner from Ellie's Studio. And then also a little tiny heart on that journaling as well. And then that side of the layout is done. Now on this side of the layout, I'm going to tell you that I probably spent way too much time masking and stamping here, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. Um, but I am going to add just a few embellishments first. Um, I wanted to layer so that that top photo has the frame that's digital on the layout itself, and then I wanted to add the banner on top of that frame and on the photo just to add some dimension and add some more product here. Um, and then there's also the puffy heart. These, um, these little note pads, these little sticky notes were from Studio Calico. They're from the Birds and the Bees documenter kit. Um, and I hadn't had a chance to use those yet. So I grabbed them and then I'm gonna leave them in, on my desk for a couple of weeks and have a chance, see if I have a chance to add those here and there. Um, so you'll probably see those a couple more times over the course of the next few weeks. Um, and I, it's, they just provide an easy little journaling spot with lines, yay, <laughs> for those of us who struggle to write in a straight line. So I like having little, little helpers like that. Um, my, I'm using another one of the rubber pieces from Amy Tangerine, and I recommend using the red line tape for adhering those rubber pieces. That's been how I've used those, how I've adhered those pieces for a long time, and um, I haven't had any problems with that method of adhering those. Now, um, I did have this, this journaling card has a little space at the bottom and I just stamped one of the sentiments from the Becky Higgins roller stamp onto that. And then here's where I um, decided to do a bit more stamping and masking than I normally do. Um, I wanted to use these numbers, they're from Studio Calico and they were on the stamp all in one long line. Um, and they're really cute numbers, but I don't know who writes that small that they would actually be able to to keep the <laughs> to keep the lines. Um, I, I think it's more of a decorative kind of kind of number stamp anyway. But I decided that I would um, mask all of these numbers and use them in this journaling card. And so this is a journaling card from the the Paisley Press Pocket Guides, number six, and um, I, I, she had text on that template, and I hid all the text. Um, you know, there's different ways that you can use these lines, but I decided that I was going to stamp the numbers one through ten, and then I had ten photos on the layout and so I referenced each of the photos to the journaling on this card. It's something that I haven't really I haven't really done before. I've seen lots of other artists do it and I wasn't sure if I would like it or not but I thought I would try it and I do like it. My only recommendation is to add your numbers to the template in Photoshop or stamp them using individual numbers, not numbers that are in a row on the stamp all together like this because I had to mask. <laughs> I had to mask every single number um, in order to be able to stamp them on the, the photos themselves. So this part takes an apologetically long time. <laughs> and um, I'm still, even as I, I'm recording this voiceover, I'm debating whether or not to leave all of this in the process. This is part of why, the other part of why this process video is a little bit longer this week than normal. Um, 
But anyway, <laughs> maybe you'll learn from my mistake here. Um, and, and, I, and I don't think that it was a mistake to do this. Um, I think that next time I'll just know to use individual number stamps. Um, I still really like this little stamp set. It is from Studio Calico, from one of the documentary kits in the last three months. I don't know which one it was. It was probably April's kit, written in the stars. I think that's what it's from. I love these numbers. Um, and I really did like how it turned out. Even though it was a lot of work to do all this masking and stamping, I still liked how the journaling card itself turned out. It looks really cool. And I liked stamping um, or numbering each of the photos and then referencing them across here. It, it is a nice, it's a nice, clean, almost librarian feel to that. Um, can we use that term like that? Librarian? It has a librarian feel. <laughs> I have a friend who's a librarian, so I mean it only in the most deepest, utmost respect. So I like that. Um, it's it's a clean way of doing some journaling and including journaling about each of the photos. I tend to falter in that regard, where I don't do, I don't, I forget to journal about every photo, and I don't think that you have to journal about every single photo on your layout. Some photos, it's okay to let them stand for themselves. And I was reading um, Elise of um, Feed Your Craft. Her Instagram name is Lil Gick, L-I-L-G-I-K. And I always hear Lil Gick in my mind. And I've been inspired by her a lot recently. Um, and she wrote a blog post last week about, and in included this thought about allowing your sometimes just allowing photos to speak for themselves that you don't always have to feel like you're obligated to write these big long journaling things there's tremendous value in journaling and tremendous value in writing out those longer stories but quite frankly I feel like if I have to write so much about every layout or on every layout I feel overwhelmed by that and so it's kind of refreshing sometimes to just step back and say, okay, you don't have to journal endless, endless amounts. Um, and you probably heard that from me last week as well. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, <laughs> but I think that I had a good, I had a decent amount of journaling here on this layout. I've actually, um, journaling is something that I have been conscientiously working on in my project life this year. And I'm always thrilled to reflect on that, to, to make a commitment at the beginning of the year and say, journaling is something on my layouts that I want to work on harder. And then to actually see that, that hard work and see it coming about. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with, with where I am with my journaling on these layouts. You'll also notice something I didn't get a chance to talk to or to talk about was the wine, the wine bottle on the left-hand side. And um, so that's one of the wines that we had tried and discovered in Charleston. It's a New Zealand wine. And um, so I wanted to be sure and include that on this layout this week. And I also... <laughs> when we had that bottle it has a screw cap and um, so I decided to hang on to that screw cap and I took it out in the garage and banged on it with my hammer and flattened it so that it's now a part of the layout and um, so I'm collecting some other some other bottle caps too and so you'll see that coming in to my layouts in the next few weeks again and so that's kind of a fun thing just to grab real quick as you're going through your week and and include that ephemera on your layout. So it's a lot of fun. It's also a lot of fun to grab the hammer and bang the crap out of it. Um, just 
I just warned my family before I went out there. I said, I'm going out there to bang this. So if you hear banging out here, it's okay. <laughs> Everything's okay. I'm just banging a bottle cap. And they just ignore me and chalk it up to the weird things that mom does for her scrapbooks. <laughs> so there you go. I'm proud to be that mom that does weird things for her scrapbooks. That's me. <laughs> All right, and then you'll notice too when I stamped the six up there on the top. I was struggling here at this point with these numbers because now the top numbers leave a shadow if you if you stamp them. Um, so I was masking on the layout itself. Um, this is where it got a little bit tricky, and then you'll notice on the photo. The photo for number six that's the waffle iron and the kitchen photo um, it didn't stamp so well and it was the number six and I stamped it twice and then I let it go because I wasn't going to stamp it a third time and run the risk of it looking like you know that certain number so <laughs> anyway you guys can laugh at my little paranoia there a little bit but it did work out in the end. Like I said, it worked out in the end and I was happy. It was a lot of work to do all this masking. Um, I did a combination of both. I used washi tape on the, on the stamp with the top numbers. And then I used this little scrap piece of paper. And it's actually a cool little stamp off card, the little piece that that I used to stamp the numbers I didn't want, the mask paper, that just totally is not coming out the way I wanted it to, to come out. But anyway, the little scrap piece of paper, that looks like fun. Um, that could totally be a little piece of ephemera on its own as well. You'll notice too that I Used, there were some word strips in the For Like Ever collection, and so I um, I cut those out on my silhouette and adhered them down as as individual words. Um, usually, I might put those all on a the same little piece or the same little ephemera, but this time I just adhered them down as individual word art, and that was fun. There's a yellow, a mustard yellow one at the upper left hand side, and then these little mint green ones at the lower right hand side. And I like how that turned out, and then I added, added that little piece, that little flare. That flare is from Studio Calico Kit last month as well. And then notice here on this last frame, this is a photo of me and Alan, and I had printed out this little circle embellishment and so the pattern portion of it is on the white of the frame and the white portion of the tag is on the photo itself and then I'm just going to stamp a couple of words um, it says today's moments I'm going to stamp that onto the white portion of the tag and then I'm adding those little green leaves also, rubber, there are rubber pieces from Amy Tangerine. So I've got the words, um, they're lined up on my stamp, and then I just ink them together. And then I'm going to add these little leaves, and again, I'm going to use this red line tape. And this, this tape is always a staple in my stash, it's always keep four or five rolls of it laying around. It's great to use for these rubber pieces. It's also great to use in your mini albums or items that are heavier or bulkier. Um, it's a really good adhesive. And it's just red line tape. If you Google red line tape, you'll find it. This is American Crafts brand or Sticky Thumb brand I think is what it's being marketed as now and then a couple more puffy hearts yay for the puffy hearts from Ellie's studio y'all I love those things 
love, love, love them. And then that's pretty much going to wrap up this layout. So I'm going to just put down one or two more hearts and then clean up for you a little bit. I'll share with you some of the still photos and also be sure to check out my blog post. I always do a blog post with every video that I publish and so my uh, my blog has a new web address. It's now larkindesigntm.com and um, but of course all the old links are still working and everything like that. So be sure to check that out. Be sure to subscribe hit like and leave me a comment, tell me what you like, tell me what, what you're doing this week, and um, I'll see you back here again soon. Thanks again for watching, you guys. Bye-bye.